three as we get ready to start the third quarter. Let's take a look at the Coors Light first half stats as the Colts on that last drive resulting in a field goal got most of that first half yardage. Yeah, that, that's the point um, uh, for most of the first half they could generate just 65 yards and they get to 73 in the in the, the last drive time of possession about same each with a turnover Jets played a beautiful half of football uh, the Colts haven't really established much of anything yet so let's see what happens here shortly so Vestry set to kick it off for the Jets with Humphrey and Warren, the deep man. And that's Warren from the five. And Lamont Warren banging ahead to the 25-yard line before he's thrown back by the special teams of the Jets. So, uh, the same old Colts it looked like there in the first half. This was supposed to be their year. Uh, they've got a decision to make about Marshall Yeah, Paul. I agree with you, Tom. Uh, they flanked him too much, put him on the double wing too much. He has five carries and four catches, and last year he averaged close to 20 carries a game. So the Colts can't give up on Marshall Falk. I realize the Jets are, are stacking their defense against him, but at the same time, you must give this young man every opportunity to break the game open. So we'll see how they utilize Marshall on this one. Marimbo fumbled the snap, and a scramble for it. The Jets think they had it. Untangle And the Jets do have the fumble recovery on the first play of the second half. It has been a miserable afternoon for Ted Marcher Broda. Now that's two instances in two straight weeks where the center and the quarterback have had a problem. Last week it was a long snap. And this week it's, uh, you know what happens? The guard pulls it away from him. 79 Stasniak is pulling in it and it pulls the ball right out of Erickson's hands. Again, watch 79. As he's pulling, Erickson has the ball out there. He never really got the snap and the ball was hit by Stasniak's leg. Jets ball. Wilbur Marshall, the veteran, with the fumble recovery and the Jets in business at the 24 of Indianapolis. Back to the motion man. And the handoff is given to Moore. And Ronald Moore to the 20-yard line, gain of five. Tackled by Jeff Parrott and Tony McCoy. The Jets threatening to break this one wide open. And Tom, your, your comment was perfect. The same old Jets. I mean, the people in Indianapolis felt that with a new offensive coordinator, with Marshall Falk, one of the game's best running backs, a little help on defense are going to be great. The last two weeks, they've seen the same old folks. Beamer faked it. He's in trouble. Got out of harm's way and then threw the ball incomplete. Flag down. David Tate perhaps interfered with Kyle Brady. Looked to me like their legs got tangled. And for a six foot seven inch tight end, there's a lot of legs to tangle with. They're getting all parts of his anatomy in this week. It was his butt earlier that was the problem, right? So he's saying, wait a minute, what did I do? I'm looking. First down. Tate is called for the interference. It amounts to a 12-yard penalty and will give the Jets first and goal. See if we can pick up the contact. There you see bottom of the screen, Tate and the, the tight end Brady. Can't really see. Uh, you see the right arm behind Brady. There's no question he had contact with him. Hand in the back. So first and goal from the eight. More. Cuts up to the five-yard line. Three-yard gain before he's thrown back by Tate, who uh, has a bit of an attitude now. I'll try to make up for that bogus call on the interference. We're getting no breaks today. More of that time looked a, he looked a little slow to the line of scrimmage. Running back accelerating when he gets to the line of scrimmage. That took a long time for him to get to the key blocks. 45 yards today after only... 16 yards plus a fumble against the Dolphins last week. Second goal, five yard line. And it's 
complete for the touchdown. For Bennett, the rookie from Boomer. He grew up in Garfield, New Jersey, 10 minutes from Giants Stadium. He went to Hofstra where the Jets trained, and now he has his first NFL touchdown. He will not let go of that football for about 24 hours. But he only became a Jet fan when he was drafted. Last year, he and his buddies are at Hofstra standing outside the ropes watching Art Monk and Ronnie Lott. Now he's inside the ropes, and his buddies are watching him. What a dream day for Wayne Corbett. Lowry for the extra point. Down and through. Colts fumble on the first snap of the second half. Jets converted into a touchdown as the rookie free agent, Wayne Corbett, catches this for the score. Jim Harbaugh warming up on the Colts sideline. Perhaps he will, for the second straight game, spell Craig Erickson at quarterback. I bet he's really looking forward to coming. Trailing 24-3. This is not what I envisioned, says Jim Harbaugh. Silvestri with a kick. Warren and Humphrey, the deep man, takes a bounce into the end zone. Yeah, Harbaugh is coming in the game. This is definitely a pattern. And Jim Harbaugh was able to lead the Colts to a tying touchdown against Cincinnati last week. And then uh, Indianapolis went on to lose on a Doug Pelfrey field goal to Cincinnati in overtime. Now the coaches of Indianapolis call Jim Harbaugh a good relief pitcher. But what has uh, Craig Erickson really done here today to invoke the uh, we got to pull the quarterback rule? Nope, not, those numbers aren't bad. That nope. one interception is the uh, only thing that mars his performance. That and the fact that he hasn't gotten a touchdown. The interception went for a touchdown for the Jets. Hand off to Marshall Falk. Cuts it back the other way. Falk trying to get to the sideline. Turns up field at the 35. He has a first down before Aaron Glenn runs him out of bounds. Again there, Tom. I believe that's what Indianapolis has to key on in this second half now. Trailing 24-3. It's got to be up to the offensive line now of the Indianapolis Colts to convince the coaches that no matter what they put up there in front of us, we can still open the holes, and that's a nice one. And then uh, Falk with that, that great shiftiness cutting back against the grain for a nice pickup. Marshall again. Still on his feet. Finally swamped by green jerseys with Bobby Houston leading the way after a gain of only two. Only the seventh carry of the day for Marshall, who averaged over 20 last season. 35 yards. He does have four receptions. Now, I don't think offensively you can let a defense run you out of your idea of turning Marshall Falk loose. You've got to prove to them that you're not going to give up on him as a ball carrier. Harbaugh's first pass. And it's complete to the sideline. Catch made by Turner, and he has a first down before Wilbur Marshall, drawing a tough coverage assignment, bumps him out of bounds. Nice setup by Jim Har I don't, Harbaugh. I don't think there's anything wrong with Jim Harbaugh at all. But again, as I said last week, you know, they, they took Craig Erickson out, put in Harbaugh. They paid a lot of money in a first round draft choice for Craig Erickson. They want him to be their quarterback. They do not, when this season began, they did not want Jim Harbaugh as their starting quarterback. You made uh, an interesting statement, too, during the week that after they made that switch the first game, it's easier to pull in Absolutely. the second time, and they proved that today. Face of the blitz throws it away. Wilbur Marshall was all over him, and Harbaugh had to toss it out of bounds. Untouched. I mean, nobody even slowed him down. I'm going to see 58 come through the line of scrimmage. No one picked him up. And wrestles Jim Harbaugh to the ground. I Lindy and Fonny told us that uh, after they pulled Craig Erickson, he had several talks with him during the week. Don't worry about it. You're still our starting quarterback. Now this gets 
little tougher to sell the quarterback on that after it happens again. Harrison said that his relationship with Harbaugh is very professional. Both understand their roles, but those may be changing as we as we observe. Marshall Falk, a tough four-yard run. Donald Evans and Mo Lewis hanging on. Uh, and Lindy and Fonny even admitted to us that uh, he's not the head coach, but the most difficult game day decision you have to make is to pull a starting quarterback. And Ted Marchabrota went to him last week and said, what do you think? I want to take Erickson out. And uh, Lindy agreed, reluctantly, but he agreed. And he also agreed that Erickson would start this week. And uh, you're talking about the story Lindy told Erickson. It had to do with the Cincinnati Bengals, where he was offensive coordinator, and Ken Anderson. Anderson having, having an ineffective first game was pulled for Kirk Sonert, went on to be player of the year. Harbaugh down the sideline for Turner. Legs tangled up and flagged down. Aaron Glenn and Floyd Turner tangled up down the sideline, and the flag comes flying. There is a whole bunch of contact on this. Glenn, an excellent bump and run player. But watch Turner and Glenn get their arms all tangled up and they're fighting. And frankly, I don't, who do you throw it on? Is it on the defender or is it on the receiver? They're well, calling it on Aaron Glenn, the defender. Most times it will go against the defender, and they were a, a chicken fighting all the way down the yes, sideline. They were. So the Colts have a first down now at the 13 yard line, 30 yards on the interference penalty. Charles Arbuckle, 81, the big tight end. Already they've lost their leading receiver, Flipper Anderson, with a sprained left knee. Harbaugh changes the play. The pressure Harbaugh got away. He's going to try to run for the corner and then dives down at the 10 yard line where Wilbur Marshall covers it. Very smart. Wilbur had him in the crosshairs. <laughs> Dead aim, huh? Yeah, he was looking right down the middle, now left. Nobody there. Pressure. And uh, he looks to the inside here and sees 58 coming. One of those big guys coming. Yep. Let's get down here on this hurt. There's a veteran. Second down, seven from the New York 10. Both trailing 24-3. Quick drop by Harbaugh, who lays it up for Dawkins. There's a penalty marker down. Against New York. Defense, offside. Number 31 lined up in the neutral zone. That would be a five-yard penalty. We'll repeat second, second time down. second Aaron Glenn has been in the neutral zone. Aaron has bumped and run. And I think four times that they've had a man in the neutral zone for a five-yard penalty in the game. Well, Washington was lined up in there one time. An unnamed tackle was in there one time. <laughs> yes, the unnamed tackle. So now second and two with the ball resting on the five. And to have any hope, the Colts have to punch it in here. 50 yards and penalties against New York. That's been a problem in both of their games this season. Hawk is on a wing to the right now in motion. Harbaugh hands the pots. He won't be stopped until they get to the one-yard line, running through tackles. Finally, Eric Howard cuts him down. Hatsi at 260. If you give him a head of steam, you're going to have to hit him with a shoulder. You try with the arms to tackle this young man. You're not going to have much luck. Jim Vicarella, the defensive coordinator on the Jets' sideline. Again, Oh, Lewis, excellent tackle, arms, no way is he going to even slow him down. So second and goal, just short of the one-yard line. First and goal, I should say. Marshall Falk. Oh, what a hit by Mo Lewis. First time he's ever played inside. Has always been an outside linebacker. Excellent read, moves to the ball, and tackles through the player, not to the player, for the stop. Nine 
first play of the drive coming up. It's consumed over four minutes. It's second and goal. Falk still not in. Looks like Mo Lewis was there again. Mo's wife Christy expected to give birth to their first child in a couple of weeks. Colts are facing a third down as the fans rally the defense. They've converted only three of seven in the game. Fair play. Well, you said they had to go to Marshall. Let Cox block for him. He's the fullback. Marshall Falk, airborne. Fumble. And the Jets have it. Number 74. Now Marshall Falk gets flipped here. He goes in head first. Excellent defensive stand by the Jets. When he gets airborne, looks like he starts coming down on his head. Wilbur Marshall sticks his hand in there, gets the ball loose. Howard with the recovery. Defensive stand. Marshall Falk fumbling after a 78-yard drive ends with a fumble at the two-yard line. Two tight end formation now. The lone running back, Brad Baxter. Goal line formation for the Jets. Baxter trying to punch it out of there and does get it out close to the five-yard line where Freddie Joe Nunn makes the hit. Another fumble recovery there by Eric Howard in the first two takeaways resulted in touchdowns. In fact, uh, Indianapolis has had the ball three times inside the Jet 20 today. And they have, what, one field goal to One field goal, that's it. They had a missed field goal, a made field goal, and that fumble. And it's Baxter. Takes off one tackle to the nine-yard line. Jeff Parade makes the sure tackle there. All right, Tom, as was the case last week against Indianapolis, the Colts have just made their their job so difficult. Just they allow the opening drive by the Jets, then a turnover, and then the turnover here. I mean, they've moved the ball reasonably well in some instances, but they just keep making the dumb mistake that you don't expect a veteran Indianapolis Colt team to make. Two possessions, two fumbles here in the second half. 97 yards rushing for the Jets. Indianapolis and Marshall Falk, 54. Baxter tackled for a loss back at the five-yard line that time by Tony Bennett. And that'll bring up fourth down. Bennett just, he just jumped inside somebody. Let's see if we can see who it is. Yeah, he's supposed to be a block by the rookie tight end, Kyle Brady. And Bennett gets across the line of scrimmage and gets right in the face of the running back for a loss. So Brian Hansen ready for his first punt of the day with Ben Bronson in deep punt receiving formation for Indianapolis. Bronson from the 45. Good set up. He gets it two blocks, another on the corner. And Hanson slows him down long enough for the pursuit to catch up in the person of Fred Baxter. So the kicker, Brian Hanson, saved a touchdown there. The punt covered 50 yards, but then Bronson on a 30-yard return. Hanson did his job, and his team is up big. Unfamiliar position on the sideline as Jim Harbaugh remains at quarterback for the Colts. Erickson telling us uh, he had been pulled from the game before, but has spent very little time on the sideline watching in his career. Just off the line of scrimmage, Potts moves back. Oh, to no one. Dawkins broke inside, pass went outside. That wasn't even close. And if you're just tuning in late, you can see why Indianapolis Colts have had so many problems. Interception, return for a touchdown, punt, this field goal, field goal, fumble, fumble. This is the same old Colts. Oh! In their best field position of the day, this drive starting at the Jet 24. 
And the first play is a uh, pass not even close. Harbaugh swings at the ball. One on one with a linebacker Houston got away from him and then Aaron Glenn grabs him around the center of the line tackles him after a gain of about seven. When Lindy and Connie got to Indianapolis, he was going to be like a first round draft choice. It's very obvious, and in fact, he told us that season, he probably put too much offense in because they're coming up with mental errors. So he cut the list down, and they still had the air. Third and three. Falk, nowhere to go. Big Marvin Washington took the blocker with him and collapsed Marshall Falk. Take nothing away from this Jet defense. That last goal line stand, you think it didn't inspire him a little bit? Washington on the inside move. He tackled both. Is it the guard? No, the tackle. Jason Matthews just shoves him out of the way. Falk for a loss. Another field goal attempt upcoming for the Colts. Mike Kofer. Wow. It has been a long afternoon for the men in blue. A mess offensively. They don't know who their starting quarterback is. They can't get much of anything out of Marshall Falk. It's not working. Four times inside the 20 today and only a field goal. Eugene Daniel out of the game with a hip pointer, and I see Quentin Coriot with his pads off down on the bench. Boomer's pass on the money, Charles Wilson. Ashley Ambrose, who is replacing Daniel, makes the tackle, and Wilson is hurt. Yeah, Javon McDonald went right over him when it appeared he was on the ground. And and does look injured. No flag. Devon McDonald is replacing Quentin Coriat, who is on the sideline with his pads off. Let's see if we can pick, pick up what happens here. McDonald. Receiver is down on his knees. Uh, not ripped his head off, did it? I hope he's flexible. Charles Wilson takes. A shot after he was apparently down. We'll be back. Looking at the ankle or foot of Charles Wilson, who was injured on the last play on what should have been uh, a penalty call, but was not. Wilson has four catches, including a touchdown today. And off to Baxter. And that's a Jet first down to the 41-yard line where Jeff Farad makes the tackle. I'm still looking for the uh, Quentin Coriot that leaves the field. He has had uh, off, obviously, through for the day. Well, the report we have is he pulled a groin muscle earlier in the week and he aggravated it. Did start this game. You were We're still looking for the dream matchup of Jets reserve tackle James Brown blocking on Tony Bennett. We'll, we'll send the highlight into the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. James Brown at 330 pounds is the godfather of soul food. Yarborough, diving catch. He worked for that one. He worked hard for that one. Boomer down on the field. Call two against New York to nullify the diving catch by Yarborough. Let's see if we can find out what happened to Boomer. Bennett down by his legs. 49 Tate on the safety blitz. A lot of activity around Boomer of Sarison. Bennett on the outside. Tate looks like on the delay blitz. Yeah, coming from the top of the screen, untouched. Moment right in the chest. Malamala was called for the hold to nullify the reception, but uh, more important right now is the condition of Boomer Esiason. Wouldn't it be ironic if he were 
injured on a day when he had a chance to silence his critics. And Bobby Brister will come on, but not the way some had predicted. Uh, you know, in, in Boomer Esiason's career, there aren't many quarterbacks who have been hit harder than Boomer. Reason? He's had decent protection, but he's a quarterback who has always hung on, hung on to the football to try to make the play. He hates to just throw the ball away and he'll stand in there and take the abuse. Everywhere he's played, Cincinnati and here, he hangs out with the offensive line, takes him to dinner, uh, treats him like children, like his, his, his own kids. And many offensive linemen do act like kids. If you're, that's what well, you're so does Boomer in some instances, <laughs> but buys him dinner, treats him to toys, buys him cars, trucks. Feet and able to walk off the field and it looked like he's trying to shake feeling back yeah. into his arms or something. I tell you, he's tough. Has been throughout his career. He's 11 for 16, 128 yards and two touchdowns, and that was a 40-yard reception, which will be nullified by the holding penalty. Charles Wilson is back for the Jets. That's good news. And Bubby Brister is now the quarterback. Andrew Bubby Brister. Yeah, this. His sisters is named him Bubby Andrew. Five of his sisters. Rondo Moore with a fumble picked up. Tony Bennett with a touchdown. Now well, that's two straight weeks Tony now. Bennett. Moore has fumbled the ball. Fumble for the touchdown. 31 yards on the scamper by Tony Bennett. Who left his heart in San Francisco, but will keep that football in his arm. When he tries to bounce outside here, right there, he makes that spin move, then contact comes again, I think, from David Tate. 49 knocks the ball loose. And it's a good thing it wasn't 10 more yards to that goal line, or he'd have been caught. But Colts first score comes off the defense. But they'll take it. And Mike Cooper now for the extra point try. And he boots it through. So the Colt defense takes matters into its own hands. 2-11 left in the third. Bennett with the score. Miller, 59 yards and a touchdown. No Dion in the Dallas secondary yet. 21, 14, four and a half to play in the third. Let's go back to the Meadowlands, Tom and Bob. All right, thanks, Greg. And uh, Dallas may not be the dominant team we thought, but Denver hanging right in there with them, huh? Yeah, I'm kind of surprised at that score. And frankly, when uh, Deion Sanders gets there, the amount of money they're paying, he ought to be just the Dallas defense. Don't need anybody else at that price. <laughs> well, Boomer Esiason shaking up last possession. And the Jets are going to get the ball back. We'll see whether it's Boomer or Bubby when we sort it all out. Here's Dexter Carter. 25 yard line, no more, as McElroy makes the special teams tackle after a 15 yard return. And it is the guy you said was tough, Boomer, that returns for the Jets. I was shocked to hear him tell us look, I got new teammates all around me. We're learning a new offense, we're learning a new defense, but I think I got to lead this team to the playoffs to stay here. So he wants to retire from the New York Jets and stay in the New York area, but he believes if they do not make the playoffs, he's gone. Just had the win knocked out. And we'll put it up on first down. And incomplete led Ronald Moore just a little too long. And he's directing a little traffic is Boomer. Boomer. Go ahead, Tom has, you know, started rooming with the tight end Johnny Mitchell, who didn't play today because of back spasms, but at the end of last season, after they lost their fifth straight game to wind up the season on the plane back, Mitchell said to Boomer, why don't you like me? And so they got lockers next to each other, and then at Mitchell's suggestion, they started rooming together, and it's led to a mending of any hurt feelings they had between the two, and one thing Boomer said is, I can't believe how much the man sleeps <laughs> 12 and a half hours before the game last week. Blitz coming, Boomer down to the hot receiver, Morrell. Shakes two tacklers, Morrell down the sideline, bucked out of that one. It's a 40 yard line, New York first down. Well, that was an awful nice block by Roger Duffy, the left guard. 
makes just a little block enough to get Morrell underway. Excellent call. The Colts are uh, trying to put as many people up in the face as they can. Watch 62 when he releases out here. He's going to get a hit on that defensive back that's coming out there. Belzer just frees up Morrell just enough to pick up the first down. Nice play all the way around. After the game against Miami, Morrell in his third year from West Virginia was both the leading rusher and receiver for the Jets. That one covered 15 yards. Morrell again. This time running the football and effectively to midfield and a gain of nine. Freddie Joe Nunn finally got him down. I don't know why this kid doesn't get the ball more. You see that nice little shake back there in the, uh, in the backfield? Saw that the point of attack was crowded. Breaks it back inside. We can see the move here. Outside, outside, plants his feet back inside. Excellent vision to uh, go where the blocking takes him. Rich Kotite called him an excellent change of pace back. Have to think about using him all the time if his production continues. Up back, Baxter has a first down for the Jets as we come to the final seconds of the third quarter. Morell has rushed uh, four times for 15 yards, two receptions for 59. Baxter gets the first down, but Morell is the man that put him in possession. Yeah, position I think, again. Tom, I think Baxter is a heck of a back, too. Big, strong, will hang on to the football. They bring in uh, Moore, the new kid, and try to feature him as best they can. Morell. of other white-shirted Colt defenders. And the final seconds of the third quarter tick away. That's the end of the third with the Jets leading 24-10. Back after these messages from your local station. Sunday ticket. Quarters, Indianapolis finally getting a touchdown on a fumble recovery and score by Tony Bennett. Second and 14 for New York. Look. That was an odd looking Ellis Johnson, the rookie from the Colts, was across the line, but he didn't blast across. He just sort of slithered in there in a gap. Yeah, tiptoed. Uh, you know, if you're a defensive lineman, you're going to go offside. Go offside. <laughs> All righty. He, he tries to uh, tiptoe. No, no. Number 56. <laughs> Five yard penalty. Still second down. Ellis got the start today with the uh, injury to Tony Saragusa. Rookie first round draft choice, the 15th player taken. I think they ended up calling Tony Bennett's number, but obviously it was Ellis Johnson that was deepest into the uh, Jet backfield. <laughs> <laughs> deepest into the backfield, yes. And Bennett made contact with this, and Ellis, with that tiptoe move, didn't touch anybody. Boomer throws it away. Look, you see how smart Boomer is? He was in the pocket, was going to throw it away, realized, no, no, it'll be intentional grounding. Gets outside the tackle, throws it out of bounds. No intentional grounding. Presence of mind. What a difference for the uh, Colt defense in a week. Last week, though they lost in overtime to Cincinnati, they held the Bengals without a single third down conversion in nine tries. But today, the Jets are four of six on third down. There's no shortage of bad things that uh, <laughs> happen to folks today. Uh, that's just another one, Tom. <laughs> Third and nine for the Jets here. What they've done. Oh, okay. Wide open. No, couldn't catch up to it. I hey. He was streaking down the sideline and no one around it. I'm not sure whether it went through his hands or not. It looked like it went right between them. Right, yeah, right through his hands. That should have been caught. There's no sun in his eyes. The ball is, again, well thrown by Boomer Assassin. He recognizes Morell is uncovered. Oh, that was a reject. He was already counting that touchdown, I think, was his problem. Man, that hit the post. <laughs> Hanson with the punt. will sail into the end zone on the fly. I think that's what they had in mind. There is a penalty marker back that field. 46 yards if it counts. They'll come out to the 20. 
and it'll be against the Jets, and I'm sure the Colts will decline and take the ball at the 20 yard line. Ineligible downfield, number 51 on the kicking team. Penalty is refused, touchback, first down. So the Colts will have a first down at their own 20 when we return, but they trail 24-10. Set out crowd at Giant Stadium has enjoyed things today as the Jets have a big lead here in the fourth quarter. Draw play, hand off to Marshall Clark. Max pretty hard by Gary Jones. Gained about five yards. Let's go to Greg Gumbel now for another update. Greg? All right, Tom, this time we take you to San Diego. Stan Humphreys, his second touchdown pass of the game. This one to Ronnie Harmon down the sideline, 15 yards in the score, and the Chargers vault ahead of Seattle. It's 14-10 in the fourth quarter, plenty of time to play, Tom. All right, Greg, here's Marshall Falk again. The uh, Chargers, the defending AFC champion, sort of a forgotten team. You don't hear much talk about this. Yeah, I know. There was a lot of talk about in the offseason that uh, maybe San Diego celebrated a little too much. I'm, I'm having a difficult time believing that with Bobby Ross as the head coach and Bobby Beckett as the general manager. You think he, those two would straighten everyone out, but yeah, they've gotten off to a rough start. Jet fans trying to rally their defense for a third and one. The Colts have converted three of nine. Hawk, close to the first down. He crossed the 30, and he will have it. Well, the Jets, I heard some of the Jet fans razzing a man in a Giants jersey as the Giants lost today to go 0-2, and the Jets bouncing back from that 52-14 loss to Miami last week. Meanwhile, the only thing that's alive and well in Indianapolis is the quarterback controversy. Once again, Jim Harbaugh has replaced Craig Erickson. Yeah, how do you ask the question this week who your starting quarterback is? Jets take a timeout here. Comes with 12.53 left in the game. New York up 24-10. Ian Fonte told us yesterday this is the worst job in the world when you lose, and right now he is losing 24-10. In fact, his offense has gotten only three points today, and that every coach needs to have a dog. His two golden retrievers will be the only people close to him when he returns to Indianapolis. Ah, oh, Stephanie. Why Stephanie? <laughs> She's a trooper. He didn't include her. Now I have to quote correctly. Well, you're right. <laughs> I'm including Stephanie. Flags down. That one uh, looks bad from the start. Larry Nemers will fill us in. Jets think it's against Indianapolis for illegal procedure. Neutral zone infraction on the defensive team. That's a five-yard penalty. Still first down. And the Jets were wrong, but uh, that's, I think, the fifth neutral zone infraction penalty. Watch Harbaugh's head. It didn't really bob his head, but uh, you can tell the difference in the voice inflection there. Across the Jets five, it's first and five Indianapolis. 12.53 remaining, they're down 14. Draw play handoff to Potts. And Potts punishing it. Would be tacklers to midfield. Low Lewis was sort of just hanging on his back. Went for 14 yards. Somehow, they have to get the combination of Potts and Falk more involved in the running game. You know, they give it. To Roosevelt Potts too infrequently in my estimation. So uh, so many defenses are going to be set to stop Marshall Falk. First down at midfield for Indianapolis. Marshall Falk in the slot at the bottom of the screen. Oh. Harbaugh chased. Unloads it to Falk. He's one on one with a linebacker who pumps him out of bounds. That was Wilbur Marshall. Didn't go for any moves, just wrapped him up. Gain of five or six yards. Goodness. You saw Roosevelt Potts come up the line of scrimmage to help a pass protection. Bobby Houston ran right over it. I mean, planted it. Bobby Houston's coming here. 
you're going to see Potts come up here to try to help with the pass protection. Watch what happens. Houston bounces outside. Bam. Puts Potts right on his keister. I didn't think that was possible. I didn't either. Picked up by a Colt lineman, but they say it was down. So Loudermilk was uh, off to the races, but the ball is ruled down. And Jones. intentional grounding called on Harbaugh. I I'll tell you what, though, I thought that ball bounced out of I his hand too. and hit Loudermilk. 63. Well, in Washington again, a great pass rush move. This time on Eric Mallon, the guard. Well, he did throw yeah, it. That's grounding, sure. Yeah, he did throw it. Malum is right in Harbaugh's face. E. Douglas, 99, coming from the other side. Number four. And this, this is getting up here for the Colts. Penalty I mean, is a 10 yard penalty and loss of down. Back to training down. something. This is. Well, if Ted Marchabota looks a little cold, I don't think it's the uh, wind that it's blowing. It's uh, the performance of his Colts in the first two games that has left him cold. And they were so much looking forward to the first three games. Cincinnati, Jets, Buffalo, and then the bye week. There were some who were even talking about 3-0. Now they're really looking forward to that bye week. <laughs> Can't come soon enough. And now we must go to Buffalo next week. Third and 15 play. Harbaugh steps up and has his man. It's complete to Turner, and he will have a first down across the 40-yard line. Clutch play, Harbaugh to Turner. Great throw. I mean, Harbaugh steps up. Watch Turner. This is kind of the prevent attitude of the New York Jets. They let him just release right through the zone. He's certainly there to make the catch. That's an easy completion. There wasn't much pressure on Harbaugh, but Real well. So the Colts get a first down with a 38 of the Jets. They're not dead yet. Delayed handoff. Marshall Falk trying to use his blockers. Finally lowers his head to the 30, where he's pushed back by Mo Lewis. <laughs> 16 carries, 52 yards for Marshall Falk. Getting up around his carry per game average from last year, but no breakaway runs today. He's had some breakaway pass receptions. Falk on second and two. Has the first down and inside. He's for the 18-yard line. Suddenly, the Colts showing life, and uh, the Jets perhaps were celebrating and relaxing a little early. Todd Scott made a saving tackle. Uh, Jim Vicarella, the defensive coordinator, for 12 years he was connected with uh, Buck Carson. They were buddies, and he said last week, when you give up 52 points, now it's my defense. Workhorse Marshall Falk is to the 15-yard line. Now, Tom, what's happening here is the Jets are going with a five defensive back set. So there's that one less linebacker. It's a 4 2 5 set. And the Colts are taking advantage of it. They, they stay with the nickel group as Marshall comes off the field. We're not worn in. 10 play drive. This is the 11th coming up. Warren, the home setback. Give it to him. And Lamont Warren, only back to the line of scrimmage, been driven back by Marvin Washington and others. But let me, if I may continue, the idea of this defense is look, we'll give you all the yardage you want, stay in bounds, eat up the clock, we'll give you the three points, we'll change our defensive mindset personnel when you get down inside the 10 yard line. Marshall Falk back in. He's rushed for 31 yards on this drive. It's third down and six. Uh, now here comes the sixth defensive back in for the Jets. Protection and room to run, and then throws it in a tremendous catch by Dawkins. 
Dawkins went down to knee level to haul that one in and scores the touchdown ahead of Otis Smith. Good scramble by Harbaugh, good catch by Dawkins. Absolutely. He hesitated for a moment. Marshall Falk was sitting right out there on the flank and he was going to throw it to him, but stayed with it. He's looking right. Now you're going to see him catch the eye of Marshall Falk out there. No, I need it downfield farther. Stays with Dawkins. Dawkins continues to run the pattern. And he beats Otis Smith for the touchdown. Colts back in the game as poorly as they played. Colfer to add the extra points. And he got it. No, Jim Harbaugh, second straight week, put a little life in the cold offense. Dawkins caught that one. Choice from California in 1993. Had uh, a reputation as a man prey to go over the middle and take a hit and of dropping the football, but he sort of put that by the boards with 51 receptions last year. And now in his third season with the Colts, makes that touchdown catch. Best thing about that play is that Dawkins stayed with the pattern and so did Harbaugh. It's easy to give up on patterns like that. You, know, you come across the middle, you are running into fat guys with a bad attitude. And is still kind of swirling around on the field as it always does here at Giant Stadium. So a hold for the kickoff. Dardaki. Dexter Carter is down to the end zone. And with the aid of a little following win, the touchback occurs, and as poorly as they have played, the Colts are right in it with 8.40 left. Did this last week. Except they had control of the game early, led 10 0, then let the Bengals back into the football game, and then Harbaugh comes in, gets them back in the game, and they lose in overtime. But remember, they fumbled at the one. Or yeah, they did. You're right. <clears throat> now it's up to the Colt defense to get the ball back. Jets have it at their own 20, leading 24 17. Play action fake. Boomer Esiason. Not much there for Baxter, who was bumped out of bounds by Devon McDonald. All right. The Jets had this game firmly in their control. And that last drive they put the momentum on, on the side of the Indianapolis Colts. Colts have dominated the time of possession this half. Over 13 minutes to eight for the Jets. And but for that fumble at the one and the fumble off the working drive, be right there. Another play action pass. Messiah to the wings it way over the head of Charles Wilson, his intended receiver. Again, the Colts came with the blitz. And we're just throwing it away. Now, oh, Rich Kotite realized, wait a minute. Let's go back to our bread and butter plays here. Vince Tobin is saying we're going to stay with the blitz. Let's uh, disrupt them as best they possibly can. We don't want him to stand back there and look for an open receiver. So third and long, third and seven coming up for Boomer and the Jets. job of avoiding the rush. Stoven, see if you can see 59 from your left. Yes, Stephen Grant, right, hanging on Boomer Esiason, makes the completion. Again, an excellent job of the blitz pickup, and again, staying with the pattern. 18-yard gain and a jet first down. The clock continues to roll at 7.30. for the 45. Now let's go to our studios. Greg Gumbel with another update. All right, Tom, in Dallas, last week, Emmett Smith, 163 yards and four touchdowns today, 113 yards, and that one from a yard out. It's now a 31-14 Dallas lead, about seven minutes to play. Let's go back to Tom and Bob. All right, Greg, well, 
Last time uh, Greg gave us an update, we uh, complimented the uh, Broncos for hanging in there. So much for that. Yeah. From the 45, it's second and seven, New York. Blitz comes again from every direction. And Morrell got away. Running room. Adrian Morrell to the 25 yard line. Ray Buchanan hauled him down. Once he got away from the initial blitz, there was plenty of room to roam, and it goes for 30 yards. The Colts in a position where they have to take the chance. What three linebackers blitz a defensive back. 62 misses the tackle. That's the rookie Ellis Johnson. Just tries to do an arm tackle. Morrell breaks to the outside. Oh, that's well, that'll run your defense out of the blitz. We gotta find something else to do. Well, they came with a wholesale blitz and they did get burned for 30 yards. First down New York at the 25 of Indianapolis. Now less than six minutes to play. Morrell dancing his way for a couple of yards. Uh, not to go back to the Dallas Denver game. If Deion Sanders is worth a $12 million bonus and $5 million a year, whatever it is, what is Emmett Smith worth? Well, that's probably what he's going to be saying about tomorrow, or his agent anyway. Timeout taken here by Indianapolis with 5.43 left in the game. Saving a, a little time for his offense should they get the ball back and a chance to. Uh, Perhaps tie the game if the defense can stiffen here. Six play drive, the big one, that 30 yard run by Adrian Morrell. He now has rushed, thanks to that, for 46 yards and caught passes for 59. Second and eight. Bumble. Bumble by Boomer, and looks like the Colts have it. The exchange from center was not good. The ball laying on the turf, and the Colts recover. Jason Belser, 29 again, faking the blitz up to the line of scrimmage, made Boomer pull out too quickly. I guess those two haven't decided exactly who has the ball yet. I think Stephen Brandt was the man that uh, pounced on it for the Colts. You see 29, Belser right up there. It looked to me like the center, I, I blamed it on Boomer, but it looked to me like the center, Cal Dixon, had a big, long reach block to make. May have moved a little quick. And the ball is on the ground, and the Colts have it. And again, it was the threat of the blitz that probably made him move a little quickly, and the Jets turn it over. Now, one thing's for sure. The Jets can't go with that nickel defense or that time defense they had on the last drive. One, two, three, four. This is the standard jet defense here. Colts playing without Clipper Anderson, who injured his knee earlier. Jim Harbaugh. Turner. First down, gain of 12. The ball out to the 37-yard line. Otis Smith with the hit on Turner after he made the reception as Craig Erickson, second straight week, pulled at quarterback and has seen Jim Harbaugh move the club. And the way this has happened not only last week for Indianapolis, but also in the preseason, Jim Harbaugh has come on in relief and done an excellent job. Got the Colts back in the game. Less than five and a half. Falk to the 42-yard line. Mo Lewis to tackle. And Tom again now. Jets go with the nickel package. One less linebacker. They run Falk. They go with their base defense. And they throw. Falk netted five yards on that one. It's second and five. And throws it to Dawkins, complete for a first down. Otis Smith wrapped him up, but he had enough. Marvin Washington had Harbaugh in his grasp, and Jim was able to spin away. That shows some leg strength. Marvin Washington's going to come from right up inside the guard, grabs a hold of the jersey. Well, that's a presence of mind, isn't it? Stay on your feet, keep looking downfield, make the completion. 
for the first down. Another clutch play by Harbaugh, who has had several on these last two drives. Six defensive backs on for the Jets. This could be a free one for Indianapolis. Harbaugh lines up and heaves it downfield incomplete. Dawkins was closest to it. Harbaugh knew he had a chance for a free one there because the Jets' Marvin Washington jumped offside. Defense, number 97, offside. Five-yard penalty, still first down. I can't imagine why the Jets have been offside so many times today. And Marvin has been two or three times that you see the voice inflection, the head bob by Jim Harbaugh, but the coaches will say, Marvin, look at the football. Watch the football. When it moves, yeah. Richie's saying to the ref, he's bobbing his head. He's bobbing his head. First and five for the Colts. Three minutes, 58 seconds to play. Harbaugh's pass complete to Falk. Wrapped up at the 40-yard line. He'll have enough for a first down. Lewis and Smith ready for him. But the first down reception made by Marshall Falk. Each team with two timeouts left. The clock moving toward 340. 24-17 game. And giant stadium. Very close. Harbaugh steps up. Now he's going to have to run, and he's down to the 39-yard line. Donald Evans... Made a swipe at the football, but couldn't get it. And Harbaugh manages only a yard on the scramble. And Harbaugh almost got loose. But again, the choice you want here, he's got two timeouts left. Driving, clock running. You want to throw the ball if you can to stop the clock on the incompletion. Now inside the three-minute mark. Harbaugh trying to rally the Colts. In the pressure, and again Harbaugh escapes. Harbaugh up the sideline, out of bounds, inside the 30, and a flag down for a late hit by Donald Evans. That was a dumb play by Donald Evans. That's 15 on top of the game, no question about that. Legs kind of give out here by Harbaugh. There's the sideline, he's down. Boy, he dies at that first down marker, and then Evans with a very, very stupid play. First down. Matter of fact, I think he's being replaced. Mark Spindler is coming in. Does Donald Evans stay in or does he leave? It looks like Washington is shaken up back upfield at the 40-yard line. Yeah, he does look just tired. So Spindler comes in. That, that, that's one of the all-time dumb plays I've ever seen. Well, it wasn't ever. Evans with a gift for the Colts. And suddenly they are inside the 15 of New York. Trailing by seven. Clock, two minutes, 43 seconds. Jim Harbaugh has made clutch play after clutch play the last two drives. Blitz comes. Falk was uncovered from the minute he left the backfield. I saw Jim Harbaugh next week. He has no question. Here's Mike Colfer to try to tie it up. And Colfer has done it. There is a penalty marker down. Flag on the play. I think it's running into the kicker. Right, could be. Personal foul. Aaron Glenn Roughly going the before the block runs into Cooper. Here's the touchdown. You see the blitz. Mo Lewis is one of the guys blitzing. Marshall Falk runs the out pattern. No one pays any attention to him whatsoever. 
Easy six. And then a running into the kicker on the point after. Hofer hits it through. Then is knocked down. Somebody down at his legs can't pick up the number of the individual who did it, but two very dumb plays. It was Aaron Glenn, 31 at his legs. Two very dumb plays in that drive. So we're tied at 24, and the Jets know about blowing leads. Perhaps the turning point last season was when Dan Marino led the Dolphins to a comeback here at Giant Stadium. You remember this? Time running away. The final touchdown came after Marino faked that he would spike the ball and threw it for the score. And the Dolphins 28-24 over the Jets after the Jets had had a 24-6 lead and they haven't won since then. Aaron Glenn was the man in coverage. Mark Ingram was the receiver for the Miami Dolphins. And you know Jim Harbaugh as Gardocki gets set to kick it off from the 45 after the penalty. Jim Harbaugh on that scoring drive hit all four of his passes including the touchdown pass and rushed for 10 yards. He really was the man that led that drive to the Colts. Carter from the three and blasted down at about the 13 or 14 yard line by Ray McElroy. New life for the Indianapolis Colts thanks to that man. Look at Harbaugh. He's trying to put the fear of God in his teammates on the sideline. Come on, we're not done yet. Nine of 12, two touchdowns. The Jets have absolutely let this football game, momentum-wise, slip totally away. Same old Jets. Same old Jets. <laughs> same old folks. <laughs> Which is it? Brady and Baxter, two tight, two tight end formation for Boomer Esiason. Game tied at 24. Two and a half minutes to play. Boomer's pass, that a reception made by Trevet. Now they say, well, the coach is saying no, but the officials say it is again. Hurry up offense. Yeah, the Jets are going with a hurry up offense with 2.14 to go. Does he make the catch? Yes, that looks good. Really Oh, 5'10", he didn't have far to go down to get it. Morrell picks up the first down to the 25-yard line as we reach the two-minute warning. What a turnaround for the Indianapolis Colts. They tied the Jets at 24. The great relievers in the game. He's got his helmet on, ready to go back out there. Remember, down 17-3 at halftime, the Colts, with Craig Erickson at quarterback, fumbled the first snap of the second half. Jets recovered it, took it for a touchdown to go up 24 to 3. And that 21 point deficit has been erased by a defensive touchdown. Tony Bennett's fumble recovery for a score. And two drives directed by Harbaugh to tie it at 24. First down pass from Esiason. Wins it complete to Brady. Kyle Brady has it at about the 32-yard the line, and they'll be ready to go again with their hurry-up. The Rod and Buchanan will tackle. And Brady nine on that reception. Morrell, back to the backfield, got away for a moment, and is back to the line of scrimmage no further. Ellis Johnson the tackle, and the clock continues to roll now inside 130. Expecting to throw on every down. Yeah, Surprised by that? Uh, actually, that's kind of a keep the defense honest play. And now look at this, a huddle. I think the Jets have to be very, very careful here. The momentum is on the side of the Indianapolis Colts. Richie Kotite does not want a turnover here. What's everybody thinking? Uh, they, they know what the play is. Probably a good percentage thing to do. A minute left. On the sweep. Morrell. Clock continues to roll. Buchanan tackled him. And a timeout taken by New York, stopping the clock with 50 seconds. It was enough for a Jet first down. Well, last week, last week, 
the question was asked of Ted Mark Zabrota who your starting quarterback is for next week. This week, the answer is not going to be quite so easy. Well, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish upset losers to Northwestern game one, fighting for their lives to win against Purdue. To try to get it all back together, Ron Paulus and the Irish at home next week, welcoming the Commodores of Vanderbilt from the SEC. Notre Dame football next Saturday, 2.30 Eastern time. Notre Dame and Vanderbilt, presented by Price Fister here on NBC. Head coach of Vanderbilt is uh, Rod Dauhauer. He used to be an assistant with the uh, Indianapolis Colts, wasn't he? In fact, he? was head coach for a while. He was a head coach, yes. This one slipped out of the Jets' hands. They have one timeout left. 50 seconds on the clock. Zyasen finds Morrell. Got away from two men, but not the third. Nice open field tackle made by Jason Belzer. And the Jets use their final timeout. Morrell's a real find. I don't know why the Jets won't use him more often. Yeah, I agree with you. For some reason, like that Bernie Parmalee kid down in Miami, a special teams player, has a great deal of difficulty convincing the coaches that he can carry the, the load in the offense. But Morrell, who was, was pigeonholed as one of those special teams players, every time he gets in there, he does an excellent job. Welcome to those of you who saw San Diego beat Seattle 14-10. Tom Hammond, Bob Trumpy at Giant Stadium in New York, where Ted Marchabrota and the Indianapolis Colts have rallied from a 24-3 deficit to tie the game at 24 with 41 seconds remaining. For the second straight week, Jim Harbaugh has replaced Craig Erickson at quarterback and has rallied the Colts to a tie. Last week, after Harbaugh did his magic, they lost to the Bengals in overtime and just 41 seconds left from OT here. Boomer Esiason, though, has other thoughts about that. Swing it complete to Morrell. He falls down and then is covered by the Colt defense. So the first down. Again, uh, Jets run a timeout and just throw the swing pass so the kid can get out of bounds and stop the clock. This is a third down play. And it's the same one, and it's incomplete off the hands of Adrian Morrell. That's a tough pass to throw. Do you lay that incompletion on Morrell or Esiason? You asking me? Yes. Actually, I think that's on Boomer. He was a little nonchalant throwing the ball out there. And Mala Mala down on the ground. It brings up a fourth down. I don't think the Jets have any choice but to punt the ball away here. And play for OT. And play for OT. Uh, Richie Kotite came here. He wanted this team to be tougher. They had Indianapolis buried. Absolutely buried. After Indianapolis uh, fumbles, first play of the second half, Jets win and score. They were buried. And they let them back up and in the game. Malon helped to his feet. Here's a reminder that following the game on most of these stations, it's the hunt for amazing treasures. Then Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell star in the action-packed film Tango and Cash. Hunt for amazing treasures, Tango and Cash, coming up after football. Viewers on the West Coast will see these shows at their regularly scheduled time. Brian Hansen punt formation for the Jets. The Colts don't have anybody back. Low snap. Oh, Hansen just got it away. Tony Bennett nearly blocked it. Makes a good jet bounce and will be down at about the 11-yard line with seven seconds showing on the clock. Booze raining down from the crowd here at Giant Stadium. Those that are left, some of them packed it in and headed home uh, with they, 24 to 3 on they, the board. They, they should be doing. This was close. Tony Bennett comes very close to hitting this ball. A fair snap. 
Contreras passed his fingers, and that's what Indianapolis was uh, looking for, a blocked punt. Terry Bennett has a fumble recovery for a touchdown today. That was the spark that finally kind of got him going, wasn't it? That and Jim Harbaugh's play. Yeah, their first touchdown was uh, that fumble, re fumble recovery for a touchdown. So the Colts will down it and then hope for some luck on the coin flip. Last week against Cincinnati at the RCA Dome, the Bengals won the toss and never relinquished the ball. Got the win on the Doug Pelfrey field goal. And the booze. Doesn't take much for people in this area of the country to boo it. They have every right to boo today. That summer's still leaving here before overtime starts. Same old Jets. <laughs> Same old fans. <laughs> as it seems as poorly as the Colts played in the early part of this game they have tied it at 24 and now that coin toss for first possession in overtime courtesy of that young man right there Jim Harbaugh two touchdowns and they have they were comatose before he came in and have lost a couple of key players Flipper Anderson their leading receiver and starting linebacker Quentin Corey out on their defense Eugene Daniel a starting corner also three key injuries in the game all before the comeback Official winding the clock as the kickers are on the uh, time clock, the 25 second clock this season. Gardaki ready to boot it to get overtime going. And with the aid of the wind, again hits it deep into the end zone where Dexter Carter will down it for the touchback. So Boomer Esiason and Mates will come on. And this is where they try to duplicate the opening drive of the game where they mix the ball around. Absolutely. Different uh, receivers, different runners. And yeah, they had five different guys catch the ball, four different guys carry the ball. The numbers for Boomer are outstanding. He has not thrown an interception. But look, it's been a long time since any of this jet offense meant anything in this football game. And now uh, James Brown is replacing Malamal at tackle. So James Brown will be blocking Tony Bennett here in overtime. Boomer fell down. Morrell fumbled the ball. Finally got it back and fell on it back to the 15-yard line. Things unraveling big time for the Jets. Stephen Grant covered Malamala. Oh, wait a minute. Now, now, covered <laughs> Morrell. You convinced me that these two teams didn't switch uniforms while we were. The left guard steps on Boomer's foot. They must have switched uniforms when we weren't looking. This is what the Colts looked like in the first half. This has been one of the more amazing turnarounds, and it's all come late. And Boomer not happy, as you see. Second and 15. Blitz coming from Harad. He's fighting his way, and Boomer manages to stay upright and complete it to the 20 to Brady. Kyle Brady gets him back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and 10. And boy, they picked up Harad, who just kept coming. Boomer just sidesteps him partly. That helps. And also the fullback Baxter also gets a shoulder on him. And then Adrian Morrell also helps out. Still makes the completion. Not enough for a first down. Third and 10. Great catch by Brady. And how big is this third down conversion? Third and 10 from their own 20. First series of overtime. 
Again, the blitz comes. The pressure on Boomer. And he oh. grabbed it deep downfield. Now dropped by Corbett, the rookie. I don't think 36 Damon Watts of Indianapolis got a hand on it. Welcome to those of you who saw the Cowboys beat the Broncos. We're in overtime at Giants Stadium where the Colts have rallied from a 24-3 deficit. Third and 10, Boomer Esiason sends it toward the free agent rookie, Rain Corbett from Hofstra to Cinderella Story, and he drops it. It was Ashley Ambrose in coverage, and there was no contact. He should have caught it. Brian Hansen punts. Bronson lets it bounce. He takes a good jet bounce. Back to the 37-yard line where the Colts will take over for their first possession in overtime, a 43-yard punt. Well, the Colts look so bad, they trailed 17-3 at halftime. In the first possession of the third quarter, they fumbled. The Jets took it in for a 24-3 advantage. That's when the Colts on their next possession went to Jim Harbaugh for Craig Erickson at quarterback. They got a defensive touchdown, a fumble recovery by Tony Bennett for the first touchdown for Indianapolis. And then Harbaugh with two drives directing them to a 24-24 score. Welcome to those of you who saw the Bengals beat Jacksonville 24-17. Tied in overtime. The late handoff, Marshall Falk. Flag down as Falk is taken to the turf at the 48-yard line by Gary Jones. It'll be a hold against the Colts. Falk doesn't like it, but the call will go against him. Holding. 67 offense. 10 yards penalty from the spot of the foul. Still first down. Will Wolford with the hold. And if there was one play that seemed to ignite the Colts, it was this defensive touchdown by Tony Bennett. More on the carry. Ball is knocked loose. Bennett picks it up. It's an easy ramble down into the end zone. And you're right. That was the momentum changer right there. And then uh, Jim Harbaugh with some clutch plays on two scoring drives. And the Colts, who lost to Cincinnati in overtime last week, made it to the extra period here. This is their first possession after the Jets punted on their first. Harbaugh swings it in the flat. Warren tossed out of bounds by Victor Green. It'll be second and long for Harbaugh. If there's a star of the game, there he is. Not only has he... Uh, inspired his teammates with making the completions but he's avoided the rush avoided a couple of tacklers to continue a play and make a completion and he's over on the sideline yelling and screaming at his teammates come on let's get him and Lindy and Tony the offensive coordinator I think is a new starting quarterback for the Colts from the shotgun Harbaugh hands it to Falk Using his blockers, Marshall takes it to the 37-yard line. It'll be about third and 10 for the Colts, tackled by Hugh Douglas. Actually, the Jets have been a, done a pretty good job on Marshall Falk today. The 21 carries 77 yards, most of that in the second half. He's had the big plays as a receiver, and the one touchdown came on a reception. Third and 10. Some time. Wings it downfield, complete. Dawkins with a catch in traffic at the 40 of the Jets. He took a shot from Victor Green and held on to the football. 23 yards and a Colt first down. Boy, that was a rifle shot by Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh again with a great scramble. There's only a four-man rush by the Jets. Six defensive backs. Now watch the RPMs on this one. Wow. And whap. Green hits him right in the chin. So the Colts threatening in overtime. We'll be right back.
New Jersey Meadowlands where Sean Dawkins can manage a smile after having his bell rung <laughs> and all questions about his courage erased. Meanwhile, the pressure now descending on Mike Coker who has not had a good day. He's missed two of three. He made a 20 yard field goal but missed from 36 and 38 yards. Now, Tom, when you get those hits, that catch by Sean Dawkins. You smile right afterwards because you don't remember when you watch it on tape the next week. That, oh, it hurts all over again. It does. Right. Jim Harbaugh is 11 for 14 and 123 yards since replacing Craig Erickson. Uh, he's, not only has his performance been wonderful, but he's added an awful lot of inspiration. He, he's a gutty and a fiery kind of quarterback, and it's shown here today. We're in overtime. Tied at 24. And it's to Marshall Falk. Picks his way to the 35 yard line. Got about five yards when it didn't look like much was there. Kurt Barber, the tackle. That was kind of an awkward reception of the shotgun snap by uh, Jim Harbaugh, but he managed to get it off. And here's Sean Dawkins back into the game for Indianapolis. Yeah, uh, comment about Marshall Falk. He's the weapon now that the Jets don't have in overtime. I mean, it, Jets are going with six defensive backs, five defensive backs. You can always give it to Marshall Falk. One broken tackle, 30 yards later, 35 yards later, you win the game. Boomer Esiason had a pretty good day, and it looked like he had a win salted away, leading 24-3. And uh, some mix-up on the formation. Dawkins yes. with one point from one side to another. He still might not, uh, he may be hear those bells still ringing, and the Colts have to take a timeout. We'll take a break as well. 10.47 left in OT. What? A range of emotions must have been felt by Rich Kotite today where he saw his team bounce back from the devastating loss at Miami to take the big lead on the Colts and has seen it slip away. And the Colts now with the ball at his 35-yard line. And on the other side of the field, Ted Marchabrota for the first two and a half quarters wondered, who are these guys? What are they doing? This is not what we taught them. This is not what, they, what we coached them. And then... He shows you the Tony Bennett fumble recovery for a touchdown with a small fire, and then Jim Harbaugh has made it a blaze. With the timeout, the Colts have one remaining in overtime. Second and six from the 35. Blitz comes. Harbaugh got rid of it up for grabs, and it falls incomplete. Mo Lewis right in the face of Jim Harbaugh, and that one went sort of straight up in the air. But no Jet could catch up to it. Well, that was a gutty defensive call by Jim Vicarella of the Jets. Both Wilbur Marshall and Mo Lewis go on the blitz. Mo Lewis runs right over Marshall Falk to get in Harbaugh's face. And it ends up an incompletion. Now on third and six, do you play it safe? Play for the field goal? Where do you go up top? 35, 45, and 7. Uh, that's out of his range. we got to go for the first down here. Blitz again. Harbaugh. Oh! Bounce off the pads of Marshall Falk. So Kofer will try the field goal. It's going to be about 52 yards. Oh, Tom, they have the perfect call against the blitz defense. You get the ball in the hands of Marshall Falk. He runs in for the touchdown. It's not just the first down. He comes out of the backfield. There's no one there to cover Marshall Falk. Bam. Reject. Turned up. He turned his head upfield. So Kofer will try it from 52. He's missed from 36 and 38. For the win in overtime. It just got there. Cooper shakes off the two earlier misses, and a miracle finish by the Indianapolis Colts gives them the win in overtime. 52 yards. Cooper hits it. Mike Cooper, who had missed from shorter range earlier twice. Hit the one that counts, and Jim Harbaugh engineers the comeback for Indianapolis.